Right. Well, welcome everyone uh, to the Livonia Public Library's presentation from Veg, Michigan. I would like to introduce um, Olivia and she's going to take it from here. We are going to ask though that everyone keeps themselves muted and if you do have questions, please use the chat box and Olivia will um, ask Chantel those questions when the presentation um, is over. So thank you very much. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Karen, and thank you to the Livonia Public Library for hosting. Uh, we're excited to have you all with us today. Um, so as Karen mentioned, my name is Olivia, and I am the Community Outreach Coordinator for VEG Michigan. Um, just a little bit about VEG Michigan. Um, we are the largest nonprofit in Michigan focused on promoting the benefits of plant-based diet. We put on educational programs like this one a couple times every month, host two large events every year, send out an awesome newsletter at the start of every month, have a YouTube channel with cooking videos and more. And we've recently started a college giveaway program that encourages students to try plant-based foods for free. So a lot of good stuff going on. Um, and here, as you see on your screen is our website, if you wanna check us out and learn more about our work. And I've also listed all of our social media. Uh, we promote all of our upcoming events, do monthly raffles where you can win prizes from local businesses. We highlight some of our favorite places to find plant-based food around Michigan and much more. So definitely check that out and follow us if you're interested. Um, and if you like what you see tonight and want to support our work, the best way to do that is to become a member of Veg Michigan. The basic membership is only $20 a year and you can become a member by clicking join in the menu on our website, which is right there. It's just vegmichigan.org. So check that out if you like what you see. Um, yes, and as Karen already mentioned, we'll be doing the Q&A at the end. And since everyone is going to be on mute throughout the presentation, please use, utilize the chat box you see at the bottom of the screen ask questions at any point throughout the presentation. I'll be keeping an eye on them and note them all down and make sure to ask them aloud to Chantal at the end where she can answer them. And obviously you can ask more at the end as well. Um, yeah, so just please keep yourself on mute throughout the presentation so everyone can focus on Chantal. And then also just, we have a very, very short survey at the end, just a few questions. If you would take a moment to fill that out, we'd appreciate it. We just really want to uh, give you the type of information you're looking for. So let us know, we'd love to hear it. And now let me introduce the speaker for tonight. Chantal Singer is a registered dietitian nutritionist for St. Joseph Mercy Health Systems, Michigan Heart and Vascular Institute, teaching plant-based eating and lifestyle medicine as part of the Pratikin intensive cardiac rehab program. Chantal is very passionate about plant-based eating for human health, planetary health, and animal welfare. All right, take it away, Chantal. All right, thank you so much, Olivia, for that introduction. As she mentioned, my name is Chantal, and I also wanted to thank Livonia Public Library and Veg Michigan for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. I love any chance I can get to spread the good word about plant-based eating. Uh, this presentation is going to be perfect for those who are beginners, uh, talking about the basics of plant-based eating, although if you are farther along in your plant-based journey, that's okay too. It may help spark some more uh, motivation or inspiration for different ideas for foods to include. And I'd love to create a community while we're here for this short time together today by utilizing the, the chat box. So if you're here as a beginner learning about plant-based eating for the first time, go ahead and type in the chat box something like beginner. And then if you're farther along in your journey, go ahead and um, write something like advanced or anything else about your journey. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, Linda says beginner, awesome. Happy to have you here. 12 years vegan, awesome, love to see it, way to go. Kat, Janice, novice, awesome. All right, mid-range, more beginners, perfect. Love to see it, just getting started. Great, thank you for those responses, everybody. Uh, I do wanna give a disclaimer that there's gonna be a lot of pictures of food throughout the presentation, so it may make you a little hungry, but that's okay. And, the, we'll be diving into specific foods and beverages to include, but most of the pictures are of what a meal or snack could look like. So I wanted to make it just a little bit more practical for you guys. 
So the pictures that we have here today on the bottom left is a chipotle cauliflower tacos and the cashew sauce is on top there, chipotle cashew sauce. The middle is some fresh green grapes and then towards the right is a lentil vegetable soup. Okay, so today I want to share a little bit about myself to start, and then I'm going to define lifestyle medicine. Hopefully plant-based eating is just one pillar of achieving overall health and longevity. So I want to make sure I touch on that really quick. And then we're going to explore blue zones. So blue zones are geographical areas of the world where people are statistically living longer, healthier, and happier lives. So of course, we want to check out what they're doing and what their habits are. And then I'm going to differentiate between different types of plant-based eating. Uh, there's a lot of buzzwords going around like vegan, whole food plant-based, plant-based. So we'll clear that up a little bit. And then I'll dive into specific foods, uh, nutritious foods and beverages to include. And I'll sprinkle in some of the health benefits that we can get from eating some of these foods and beverages. And then I'll provide a sample one-day meal plan to see what one day could look like. And then I'll review some other plant-based alternative products, which are really good for transitioning to plant-based eating. So for all those who are beginners, it's really good um, to take a look at some of these products that can make it easier. And then I'll finally, I'll just give some bonus tips for transitioning to plant-based eating and then share some other educational resources for them. Oh, and like Olivia mentioned, if you have questions at any time, just type them in the chat box and then uh, I can get them answered towards the end. Okay, so a little bit about me. Uh, I've been a registered dietitian for about three and a half years now. Uh, most of my past work was in childhood obesity. I was at U of M and I did some research and I also worked in clinic helping children and families who suffer from obesity. And I recently made a switch as uh, Olivia introduced me. I'm at St. Joseph Mercy Health Systems, Michigan uh, Heart and Vascular Institute in the Intensive Cardiac Rehab Program. And heart health really hits close to home to me, so I'm really happy to be in this position, which I'll share a little bit about in that case study. But a little bit about my journey to plant-based eating. It first started about uh, four years ago when I watched documentaries like Forks Over Knives and the Cowspiracy documentary, which was really eye-opening, motivational, and inspirational. It then led me to dive into some of the research that doctors are doing that are leading the plant-based movement. Uh, you may have heard of a few like Dr. Michael Greger, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Khan, Dr. Esselstein. And once I learned about the benefits that plant-based eating can have on heart health, I shared this information with my dad. So he's the case study I wanted to share. My Both of my dad's parents, uh, my grandparents, passed away from heart attacks in their 50s. And at the time, my dad had a number of risk factors for heart disease, including high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and he was overweight, obese at the time. And after transitioning to plant-based eating, after a few months, several months, he was able to drop his cholesterol by his total cholesterol by 70 points. His blood pressure went down to a normal healthy range and he lost 30 pounds and was able to keep that up for you know, up until now, so many years later. So I'm really happy to share that case study. Oh, and not to mention he is turning 60 this year, heart attack free. So that is just one small example of how profound the impacts can be of plant-based eating. And I'm really excited to share more about what plant-based eating can do for our bodies. Okay, so as I mentioned, I wanted to touch on lifestyle medicine. The American College of Lifestyle Medicine defines it as therapeutic lifestyle choices that can either prevent, reverse, or even treat chronic disease all chronic disease. And like we're going to be talking more about today, whole food plant-based eating is one of those really important pillars, but also not to mention increasing physical activity, getting some sort of daily movement in, uh, developing strategies to manage stress, which is really important right now with COVID especially. Uh, forming and maintaining positive relationships is a big part of that. Improving sleep, getting good sleep every night, and then cessation of tobacco. 
So I also extended the about me. Those are some of the physical activities that I love to do are rock climbing and cycling. But by all means, you know, even just walking is really good for, for health. So I was really interested to see what everybody else's favorite form of movement is. So go ahead and type in the chat box. What is your favorite way to move your body? What's your favorite type of exercise? Or what is something that you've been wanting to try new? Walking, yeah, walking is awesome. Yoga and walking, biking, running, awesome. Ooh, belly dancing, that's what I haven't heard before. Awesome. Paddleboarding, oh yeah, running can be hard on the knees. Um, that's so why cycling is a little bit better for the knees or just walking and yoga is really good too. Ooh, tennis, love tennis. Uh, is that bocce, like bocce ball? That's so fun, <laughs> I haven't played that in a minute. Awesome, thanks for sharing everyone. Okay, so as I mentioned, blue zones are geographical areas of the world where people are living statistically longer, healthier and happier lives. And some researchers went into these areas and studied what daily habits they had that contributed to their longer, healthier, happier lifespan. And they came up with these nine daily habits that each of these areas have. And they're really similar to the pillars of lifestyle medicine, but they go a little bit more in depth. So the first one at the top is moving naturally. Uh, people in blue zones tend to walk over 10,000 steps a day and walking is one of the best forms of exercise, so that's really great. And then right outlook is that second pillar, which includes purpose, so having some sort of purpose of uh, why you're here. And then some sort of downshifting, whether that be, and that kind of goes along with stress management too, so whether that be a nap or meditation, prayer, uh, yoga, any form of yeah, stress relief. And then eating wisely is that next pillar, which is what we're going to talk more about today. So the 80% rule has to deal with pushing away the plate when we're about 80% full, listening to our body's fullness and hunger cues. The plant slant, people in blue zones tend to eat about over 90 to 95% whole plant foods, which is really powerful. And then wine at five, this one is more optional. I think it was just in one of the regions where they had this organic red wine that has antioxidants in it and no more than one drink a day for women and two for men. And then the next pillar is connecting. So finding the right tribe, people that uh, surround yourself with people that love you, support you, uplift you, putting loved ones first, having um, strong family or friend connections, and then having a sense of belonging to community is really important as well. So connecting with others. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit more about the different buzzwords that we might hear. So vegan, plant-based, whole food, plant-based. A lot of these words, they can be interchangeable, but there's slight differences to each of them. So for whole food, plant-based eating, which is what we're going to be talking mainly about today, it is a diet that consists of mainly minimally processed uh, whole plant-based foods. So fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, uh, legumes, beans, lentils, peas. And then it minimizes or avoids highly processed foods, oils, and animal products. And then a plant-based diet is very similar, although it just it does include products that are more processed, might include some oils or sugars or more of those highly processed foods. And then a vegan diet is one that is similar to the plant-based diet, but it's very strict to not include any animal products. And vegans tend to extend love and compassion to animals through goods and services that they purchase as well. So that's a really notable, noticeable difference. And like I mentioned, all of these terms can be interchangeable as well. Okay, so I wanted to share this uh, vegan my plate. You may have seen the USDA's my plate, and this is the vegan version. And I love how simple it is. I think it just really makes it really easy to plan a meal or plan a snack with this kind of diagram. I typically recommend having two or three food groups for snack, or three to five, you know, four or five food groups in a meal, so that you're getting all the nutrients that you need and feeling satisfied and energized from from these foods. 
So the plate is made up of a quarter fruits, a quarter vegetables, a quarter plant-based protein, a quarter of grains, particularly whole grains, and then not forgetting calcium rich sources of food. And like I said, we'll be diving deeper into each one of these food groups. And this is another really helpful diagram that I like. Dr. Greger is one of the leaders of the plant-based movement. He's got a great website, nutritionfacts.org, with a lot of helpful videos that are um, easy to comprehend. And he also has this app called The Daily Dozen. It's a free downloadable app. And you can actually check off each one of these groups per day uh, to see if you're getting the recommended servings of each group. So the food groups that he includes are beans, berries, fruits, cruciferous vegetables, other vegetables, greens, flaxseed, nuts, grains, spices, and he also includes beverages and exercise as well as including the vitamin B12 and vitamin D to supplement with as well. And he says that these are everything we should ideally strive to fit into our daily routine for optimal health and longevity. And there's a lot of research behind um, all these wonderful foods, which we'll dive deeper into shortly. Okay, first starting out with fruits. Personally, this is my favorite food group, Nature's Candy. Uh, we want to eat the rainbow when we're eating fruits and vegetables as well, which I'll talk about, but getting a variety of colors in and the, the focus is on whole fruits rather than uh, fruit juice because that whole fruit comes packaged with dietary fiber, which helps regulate the blood sugar. And some of these whole fruits, some examples, there's not limited to this list. I mean, bananas, berries, pears, oranges, grapes, uh, you name it. And to the right, we have a little fruit salad with blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. And like I mentioned, all fruits are awesome to include a lot of great vitamins and minerals in there. Um, but berries in particular have some of the highest amounts of antioxidants. So just a little fun fact. And I'm curious to see in the chat box, why doesn't everybody share what is your favorite fruit or how do you like to eat fruits? Uh, something that I didn't mention is those berries are my favorite, which is one reason they're, <laughs> they're out there. And ways we can eat fruit, fruit salad, put them in a salad, put them in a smoothie, put them in oatmeal, uh, lots of different, you can have dried fruits, frozen fruits, fresh fruits, canned fruits, and 100% juice or water. Someone said mango, berries, raspberries, awesome, right up my alley. <laughs> mango, tangerines, awesome. Ooh, frozen blueberries and oatmeal. I love that because it makes the oatmeal all purple and it's really fun. Thanks for sharing everyone. Okay, next we have vegetables. Again, we want to eat the rainbow. The CDC recommends trying to get at least five different colors in a day and not always, but generally the deeper and darker the vegetables, the more nutrients might be in there. And so Dr. Greger divided up the vegetables into three different groups. So cruciferous vegetables are ones that are like uh, broccoli, bok choy, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. And these uh, cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous means like cross-bearing, and they're particularly helpful for fighting cancer. So these are powerful cancer fighters. We want to include at least a serving of these every day. Leafy greens like kale, arugula, spinach, collard greens, lettuce. These are really um, some of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet and they offer a lot of health benefits, but particularly um, they're high in calcium as well. So it's good to include those every day. And then other vegetables, not limited to this list. There's you know thousands of different vegetables out there to choose from like carrots, onion, cucumber, bell peppers, uh, asparagus, zucchini, you name it. And off to the right here, we have a picture of a salad. So the green, the vegetables in this salad are the Swiss chard is the base with greens. And then we've got some beets on there as well. And then there's also some hemp, hemp hearts and almonds on there as well. And that pictured was a balsamic uh, glaze dressing. And then, yeah, lots of other ways to eat vegetables. You can have them in salads and stir fries. You can make side dishes with different herbs and spices. And you can put them in smoothies even. Spinach and kale are great in smoothies. I'd love to hear what's everyone's favorite vegetable or what are your favorite ways to eat vegetables. So go ahead and type in the chat box. 
personally, I don't think I can pick a favorite vegetable because there's just so many that I like. But if I really, really had to, I'd probably say spinach because I eat it the most, but I'd also love beets as well. Cucumbers, great. Veggie smoothies, great way to get vegetables in. Baked vegetables, awesome, really easy to roast. Roast them up. Salad, love so many of them. They're all good. I'd love to see it. Thanks everyone for sharing. Okay, so yeah, everyone always tells us eat your fruits and vegetables and we know they're good for us, but why are they good for us? So fruits and vegetables come packed with a bunch of water, right? So they're really high in volume, really low in calories. And most vegetables are actually over like 90 to 95% water. And so that's really hydrating as well. Uh, they're really high in dietary fiber. Like I mentioned, that fiber is gonna help regulate blood sugar. It's gonna help keep us fuller longer, which is great for weight management. Fruits and vegetables are really high in vitamins and minerals, um, particularly vitamin A, C, and E, and then minerals, especially potassium, calcium, magnesium, and iron, um, and antioxidants and phytochemicals, which are gonna be really great for the immune system, keeping us healthy, and reducing risk of disease as well. And the picture we see off to the right there is a green smoothie. That's one of my favorite green smoothies to make. It's super simple. It's, you can use spinach or kale, a banana and mango or pineapple and or pineapple and then water. And if you use frozen fruits for smoothies, it'll help make a cold texture. But if not, you can throw some ice in there as well. And yeah, just a really quick and easy way to get a lot of good nutrients in. Next food group we're going to talk about are whole grains. So whole grains are grains that go through little to no processing. Um, the alternative, we have refined grains. So you might know these as like white bread, white rice, white pasta. Now these types of grains are stripped of certain nutrients like fiber and vitamins and minerals. So we really want to have the whole grains that have all those nutrients so we can get um, the best uh, nutrients for, for health. And some examples of these whole grains are oats. You can do steel cut, roll, they're great options. Quinoa, brown rice, wild rice, uh, barley, farro, uh, whole grain pasta, whole grain bread, sprouted whole grain bread in particular. I really love the Ezekiel brand. Uh, popcorn, corn, all great options. And the picture we see off to the right is oatmeal. That's one of the uh, best ways to start the day. This is oatmeal with peanut butter, soy milk, ground flaxseed, and blueberries and bananas. So the whole grain in there is just the oatmeal, but it's great to add all those different food groups. Like I mentioned, having two or three food groups for snacks or breakfast, and then four or five for meal times. And it's really great to eat a lot, like quinoa, brown rice, these are all good for, you know, stir fries, uh, quinoa is good in salads, whole grain pasta, you can make pasta dishes, whole wheat bread with sandwiches and different types of toast, popcorn is a great snack, popcorn with nutritional yeast in particular is a really great snack, uh, whole grain couscous you make salads out of, whole grain cereals, a really quick and easy breakfast option, and I'd love to hear in the chat box what are some of your favorite whole grains? What, uh, and how do you like to eat them? Cereal, whole grain cereal. Yeah, that Ezekiel brand that I mentioned uh, for the sprouted whole grain bread actually makes a cereal as well. So it's a really good brand. Quinoa salad, awesome. Oatmeal with water, brown rice every day. I love that you wrote, you can make it sweet or savory. And that's the great thing about all these foods, right? Is that we they're so versatile. You can make tons of different types of combinations and recipes to see um, how you like it. So if you do happen to try a food and you don't particularly like it, I would encourage you not to to give up on it and experiment around with different herbs and spices and combinations to see how you might like it. Okay, we got soups. Oh yeah, soups are great for um, yeah brown rice, farro, quinoa. I also didn't mention that vegetables are really great in soups as well. Ooh, sticky purple rice, interesting. Okay, so whole grain benefits. Whole grains are a complex carbohydrate, so because they have dietary fiber, that's going to help us regulate our blood sugars, like I mentioned, so that we can digest that the carbohydrates a little bit slower, and we can have that long-lasting energy throughout the day. 
they're also really heart healthy. So dietary fiber also binds with cholesterol and helps us excrete it through the waste. So it's really great for lowering uh, cholesterol levels. It's really great for heart health. Whole grains often have a lot of plant protein as well, particularly quinoa, uh, farro, oats, all have really high amounts of protein. Uh, whole wheat pasta has a lot of protein as well. And so that's really helpful for building muscles, of course. And then particular vitamins and minerals that whole, whole grains are high in are the B vitamins, again, which are really good for energy. And then uh, zinc, iron, and magnesium as well, which are really good for carrying oxygen throughout the blood and getting um, good for our muscles and tissues as well. And the picture that we see here to the right, the whole grain on this picture is the whole grain corn tortilla. And then the topping is, this is a Forks Over Knives recipe, one of my favorites. I definitely recommend going to check out their recipes, but it's um, a mango and black bean taco recipe, super delicious. Okay, one of the biggest myths about eating plant-based is that you can't get enough protein. And I love to debunk it because it's totally possible. And there's lots of different sources of protein that come from plants that um, adds up throughout the day. So particular sources that are really high in plant-based protein are beans. You have any types of beans, kidney beans, black beans, chickpeas, white beans, um, tons of different kinds of beans. They're great in chili, great in soup, great in... Uh, salads even, uh, bean salads, uh, tacos, Mexican dishes, a lot of great ways to eat beans. Hummus for chickpeas, that's a good one too. Lentils, uh, red, yellow, green, brown. Uh, tip for cooking lentils is th thinking red and the rest. So red are going to become a little bit mushier and the rest usually stay intact when you cook them. Lentils are great. You can make lentil sloppy joes, also great in pastas, salads, soups as well. Uh, nuts are a really great source of protein as well. Tons of different awesome nuts, almonds, cashews, walnuts, pecans, hazelnuts. Walnuts are particularly one of the most heart healthy nuts because they have omega-3 fatty acids, which I'll talk about a little bit later in the presentation. But nuts are great on their own. You can eat them with fruit. You can eat them on salads. You can make cashew sauces. So actually, I'll, I'll start talking about the picture to the right. There is a, a vegan cashew mac and cheese. So the cheese, the vegan cheese sauce is made from cashews, nutritional yeast, soy milk, and turmeric is making that yellow color with some other uh, spices like garlic and onion and pepper. And then seeds, so pepitas, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp parts, you name it. These are really great in smoothies, really good in salads, really great. Uh, you can make a chia seed pudding, which is just chia seeds and nut milk. A lot of good options. Also with seeds, you can just make a little trail mix too with nuts and seeds and maybe some dried fruit. It's an awesome little snack. And also good in oatmeal. Nuts and seeds are great in oatmeal. And then we've got soy foods, so tofu, tempeh, edamame. These foods are also really heart healthy and have been shown to lower cholesterol levels. Um, they're also helpful for reducing risk of cancer as well. So tofu is really great in stir fries. You can make a scramble with tofu as well. Uh, tofu makes a really good substitute for scrambled eggs. Uh, tempeh, edamame, really great in stir fries, really great with Asian dishes, or edamame is really good on salads as well, or just on its own. And then soy milk is also a really great option, high in protein. It's going to be one of the most equivalent to, to cow's milk in terms of protein and uh, calcium as well. So it's a good alternative. And then whole grains, as I mentioned, are really high in plant-based protein. Quinoa, whole wheat, uh, whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, oats, wild rice uh, are really high in protein. And then nutritional yeast, which is an inactive yeast, which is really great on popcorn, on pizza, on... Um, and on soups as well. And you can think of it like a alternative to Parmesan cheese. And then vegetables, cer certain vegetables also have small amounts of protein as well. So green peas, broccoli, sweet potatoes, and a lot of other foods have a very small amount of protein, maybe just one or two grams per serving. So all of this added up throughout the day, uh, no concerns about getting enough protein in. And I'd love to hear uh, what are some of your favorite plant-based proteins and how do you like to eat them? Go ahead and throw that in the chat box. What was the recipe for a taco? That was in uh, Forks Over Knives. 
So it's mango and black bean tacos. Pea protein shake, awesome. Beans and rice, awesome. Baked tofu, that's a good one. Almond milk. So almond milk will have a small amount of protein, but soy milk will be a little bit higher. But almond milk is still a great alternative um, for dairy, getting enough calcium and a uh, great option. So we'll talk about that a little more. Okay, thanks for sharing everyone. Ooh, hummus. Yep, lentil soup. Some of my favorites. Okay, so plant-based protein benefits. We can get all the essential amino acids that our bodies need from plants. And the great thing about these plant-based proteins is that they have zero uh, cholesterol and they're also low in fat and high in dietary fiber, which is really good for our digestive system. You're going to hear me talk about fiber a lot, but that's a good thing. Um, we want to get in enough fiber. Vitamins, minerals, zinc, particularly zinc, iron, calcium, magnesium, and again, really good for long-lasting energy, really good for building muscles and tissues, and then because of that fiber as well, the plant-based proteins are really filling and good for weight control as well. And the picture that we see up to the right is teriyaki tempeh. So tempeh is fermented soybeans, and uh, there's sesame seeds on top of this as well, so some uh, protein coming from there. There's brown rice, so there's going to be some protein coming from the brown rice as well, and then a side of steamed garlic broccoli. Okay, uh, next up we've got calcium-rich plant foods and beverages. So this is where that almond milk is going to come in play. Uh, there's tons of different plant-based milks. It's awesome how much the plant-based movement is booming because of so many different products uh, that are being made. And particularly oat milk is my favorite. I think it's the most creamy. But I also love soy milk just because of that extra protein. And uh, a really great source of calcium. Uh, beans and lentils are a great source of calcium. Almonds. And leafy greens, as I mentioned before, so kale, spinach, Swiss chard, arugula, trying to conclude those every day is a good idea. Oranges, broccoli, soy foods, um, particularly calcium set tofu, and then edamame. And picture that we see off to the right there is a um, Asian bowl with brown rice noodles. And uh, the calcium is going to come from the calcium set tofu and broccoli. And then there's also some fresh herbs, basil, cilantro, and then green onions and a faux broth. So go ahead and type in the chat. Really curious to see what is your favorite calcium rich plant foods or what's your favorite type of plant based milk? And how do you like or how do you like to eat or drink that? Oat milk straight no chaser. <laughs> That's hilarious. Love it. <laughs> Ooh, flax milk is really good too. Yeah. Almond milk and shakes on rice. Interesting. Yeah. Swim so milk and a smoothie. Great. Great options. And yeah, the nut milk too, as I mentioned before, is really great in oatmeal too. You can make oatmeal with um, nut milk instead of water or just put a splash in at the end. Okay. So the body processes plant-based sources of calcium a little bit more efficiently, and this is going to help um, build healthy bones, muscles, tissues, and really great for heart health as well. So in the right here, I've got just a few different pictures, like the oat milk, soy milk, almond milk, and then also the dark chocolate almond milk, which is a really delicious treat. But that would go more so in the plant-based eating rather than whole food plant-based. Okay, next we have omega-3 uh, fatty rich sources. So omega-3 fats are, well, I'll talk about the benefits actually in a minute, uh, but Dr. Greger had flax seeds on his um, recommended list because they're one of the highest plant-based sources of omega-3 fats. Chia seeds, hemp hearts, and walnuts are also uh, rich in omega-3s, and then algal oil um, could be a supplement as well. And the flaxseed is on this oatmeal picture. It's ground up. Generally, we want to get flaxseed ground because uh, we can digest it best. 
And the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids is that they're really helpful for fighting inflammation. So they've been shown to be helpful for brain health, reducing depression and anxiety. And they've also been helpful for heart disease as well. So lowering cholesterol, lowering blood pressure, and like I said, inflammation as well. And here's a picture of the chia seed pudding I mentioned. This is just chia seeds, nut milk, and then uh, extract, either a vanilla or almond extract, maybe a touch of uh, maple syrup sweetener, and then some raspberries on top. So chia seeds, if you're not familiar with them, and when you put them in liquid, they'll jollify. Typically, they'll take, you know, 10, 20 minutes, but if you let them soak for over an hour, um, you can get a really good pudding texture, and it's a really delicious snack or uh, dessert. Okay, next, uh, we're talking about herbs and spices. So herbs and spices, there's tons of different herbs and spices, not limited to this list, but basil, um, parsley, oregano, those make great for Italian dishes, uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, really great in oatmeal or smoothies. Um, turmeric is really great, it's that, got that bright yellow color. Ginger and other Mexican spices like cumin or cayenne pepper, chili powder, tons of different awesome herbs and spices. Go ahead and throw in the chat, what is your favorite herb and spice and or how do you like to use it? I will say my favorite is fresh basil and I love it in pasta. It's yeah, definitely one of my favorites. Mm. Oh, and I forgot to mention that all fresh herbs, dried herbs are awesome options. And when cooking, typically about one tablespoon fresh is equivalent to about half tablespoon dried. So you just want to use like half the amount when you're using dried. Ginger, oregano, sage, ooh, mint lemonade, awesome. Cilantro and guacamole, yep. So cilantro is a funny one. Cilantro comes from uh, the coriander plant. Cilantro is the leaves of the coriander plant. And there's actually such thing, it's not technically called the cilantro gene, but cilantro is kind of those like you love it or you hate it herbs. And some people who have that gene might say that it tastes like soap. And so if that happened to you or you know someone, go ahead and throw that in the chat because I think that's really interesting. As well, too. Cardamom and baked goods, yum. Ginger and almost all things, great. Love it. Oh, Linda said her mom has that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and some of these, you know, it depends um, how much you use. Some of them can be really overpowering. And cilantro in particular, if someone has that, that taste aversion, just putting a smaller amount might be a little bit more tolerable. But some people can really taste it. So it just depends. April said that's me as well. Yep. <laughs> So herbs and spices are gonna give us really great aroma, flavor, taste. They're also really aesthetically pleasing to put on foods, adding more color, bright colors. And they've also been shown to be really anti-inflammatory because they're really high in antioxidants. A lot of them have been researched for different things, but among those being anti-carcinogenic, so helping fight cancer. Um, some of them, like cinnamon in particular, have been shown to help with blood sugar control and um, some have been shown to help lower cholesterol as well. I think basil is one of those. Ooh, and one tip I wanted to talk about, I don't know if anybody already does this, but if you ever have fresh herbs that you're not gonna use, you can put them, chop them up and put them in ice cube trays with water and then freeze them and then you can, you know, they can last for a lot longer and you can just pull them out and uh, melt the ice cube and you have those fresh herbs again. So one tip. Okay, probiotic foods and beverages are, uh, are good to include. So these are fermented foods or beverages that contain live active cultures. And some examples are any pickled vegetables or pickled foods. And to the right there we see uh, pickled beets, which are personally some of my favorite. Uh, tempeh, as I mentioned, is a fermented soybean. Kimchi, uh, raw sauerkraut, sourdough bread. One note about sourdough bread, though, is that you want to make sure it's fresh baked because some of the more processed uh, versions might, might not have as many of the, the um, benefits. And kombucha as well. 
So probiotic uh, foods and beverages are really great for our digestive health. They'll help create the more that good bacteria in our gut, which is helpful for metabolism. Um, it can help boost the immune system. And they're also linked to good mental health as well. And that picture off to the right is uh, raw sauerkraut, which is super delicious on its own. Or really good with potatoes too. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about condiments. So these are just different ways to flavor food and get really good taste uh, while still getting the good health benefits of all the foods. So mustards are really great. Uh, you can get no salt added or lower sodium mustards. Vinegars, balsamic vinegar, white wine vinegar, red wine, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I've seen some of the red wine vinegars infused with different things like garlic, so that's super tasty and salsa, hot sauce, uh, soy sauce, coconut aminos, tamari, going for a low sodium version would be great for that. Uh, nutritional yeast, as I mentioned, is an inactive yeast uh, that can kind of take mimic um, Parmesan cheese. And then cashew-based dressings, which is what you see off to the right. That's a 100% vegan uh, Caesar salad. And the dressing is made of cashews, lemon juice, nutritional yeast, a little bit of soy sauce and some other spices like garlic, onion powder, and it's really tasty. And you just blend that up in a blender. I think I use some water too. And I also put on there added sweeteners like maple syrup, molasses, date syrup, and then oils like olive oil, flaxseed oil, or avocado oil. Now I put in a little asterisk next to these because by including more of these, that's going to gear more towards just regular plant-based eating, but whole food plant-based eating would keep the sugar, salt, and fat to uh, a minimum or, or none at all. All right, healthy be uh, beverages to include. Uh, water is body's best friend. We want to definitely stay hydrated throughout the day. Infused water is a great way to switch it up. You can put lemon in your water. Uh, I think someone mentioned like a mint, uh, mint lemon and yeah, mint is really good. Mint cucumber or putting berries in water is really fun. Frozen berries in particular are gonna make water turn like pinkish purple if you do with blueberries or blackberries, raspberries. And that's really fun because it can kind of trick your brain and make you think like you're drinking juice. And then you get to eat the fruit as well. So it's win-win. Um, Green teas, herbal teas are awesome healthy beverage options. Uh, personally, I love chai rooibos tea. It's caffeine free and um, super delicious. Decaf coffee is a great option. Uh, fresh and cold pressed vegetable juices. Uh, smoothies would be more of a full liquid, um, but then those unsweetened plant-based milks that I talked about as well. So go ahead and type in the chat. I'm curious to see what's everyone's favorite type of healthy beverage to drink or what is something that you'd wanna try new? Oh, someone said they, Peggy said she makes pickled beets. Oh, awesome. Water, yep, it's a good way to go. <clears throat> and do you like ice water? Do you like warm water or hot water? I know some people like drinking warm water or hot water. Cucumber water, tea all the way, herbal teas. Love to see it. Awesome, thanks for sharing, everyone. Yeah, chai, highly recommend that chai. The The brand that I get is the Yogi brand, and I think it's really fun. They have the little quotes on their uh, their little tags, like you see here, and I can make it more fun. Okay, so water, like I said, is the body's best friend. A lot of functions that it has in the body. Um, it's going to help moisten our tissues. It's going to help prevent constipation. It's going to help um, us absorb different vitamins and minerals, lubricate the joints. It regulates body temperature, a number of things that water is obviously oxygen, right? Um, being hydrated gives us a lot of energy. And the left here is Harvard's uh, daily recommendations for water based on age and gender. So that's a good thing to note depending on where you're at and you can kind of compare, think about how much water or fluids, right? So tea would count as fluid um, in, in that. But kind of see where you're at and where your, the recommendation is and see um, if maybe you could, could use a little bit more water or fluids in your day. All right. So as I mentioned throughout the presentation, a lot of these foods have so many health benefits. And when we do it all together, when we go all in whole food, plant-based eating and keeping the sugars 
fats and salt to a minimum, we can get tremendous health benefits. So these are lowering cholesterol, blood pressure, and blood sugar. Research has shown that whole food plant-based eating can not only prevent and treat diabetes and heart disease, but it can actually reverse it as well. So very powerful stuff. I can lower risk of cancer and slow the progression of certain types of cancer. Like I said, a lot of these foods are really high in antioxidants. They're really helpful for inflammation and fighting arthritis in particular. And then just in general, it can help improve mood and energy levels and increase um, the quality of life and longevity as well. Tying it back to the blue zones that I mentioned, uh, this whole food plant-based eating can help us live longer, healthier, and happier lives. And this picture that you see off to the right is avocado chocolate pudding. Great snack, great dessert, really quick and easy to make. It's banana, avocado, cocoa powder, and a tiny bit of sweetener, which is optional. And then vanilla extract, I believe I used, but you can use almond extract or maple extract, whatever you want, and topped with a little bit of raspberries. So this is what one uh, meal plan, one day could look like. Generally, it's good to eat more frequently, have, uh, you know, three meals, two snacks throughout the day, but every day is going to be different depending on what we're doing and where we're going. So like I said, this is just one example, uh, but breakfast could be oatmeal with flax seeds, blueberries, bananas, and soy milk, like we saw um, earlier in the presentation. A snack could be a handful of walnuts with some apple slices. Uh, lunch could be a chickpea salad sandwich with uh, veggies on whole grain bread and a side of a pickle and sweet potato fries, which is actually the picture you see off to the right. Delicious sandwich. That's another forks over knives recipe I highly re recommend. It's got chickpeas, tahini, garlic powder, onion powder, and then some celery, onion, and I think a few other things, but super delicious. And it, it really takes, um, well, I think it has dill, lemon juice in it too. And if you like tuna salad and you're trying to transition to plant-based eating, that would be an awesome recipe for you to try. A PM snack could be a super green smoothie like the one we saw before with some greens, fruit, and water. And then air pop popcorn with nutritional yeast. And then dinner option could be teriyaki tempeh with brown rice and steamed garlic broccoli, which we saw a picture of as well. And another thing to mention is that whole food plant-based eating is, is not really about measuring foods or um, portioning out foods, but rather listening to our body's fullness and hunger cues. And I didn't put any measurements on any of these examples because everybody's different. And depending on how much you exercise, uh, et cetera, everybody's uh, caloric needs are going to be differently. So the best recommendation is just to listen to your body's fullness and hunger cues. Okay, so now we're going to get into the plant-based alternative options. Now, this is more, like I said, plant-based eating. So these options that I'm going to be talking about aren't going to have as many of the health benefits, although they will have some in a sense that these alternative meat products, for example, have zero cholesterol and um, they're made out of plant protein, right? So some examples for meat alternatives are beef, a famous of the impossible meat, Beyond Meat is really popular. Uh, we can see the burger over here, it really mimics a, a beef burger. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention as well, these plant-based alternative products, while they might not have as many health benefits as the whole food, uh, whole plant-based foods, they're still going to have a lot of great benefits for the environment and for animal welfare as well. So good to keep that in mind. And they're, like I said, they're really great for transitioning. So for those who, you know, eat a lot of meat and a lot of dairy and a lot of animal products right now, these foods can make it a lot easier to transition to plant-based eating. Uh, other options for meat alternatives, chicken. So Gardein makes uh, plant-based chicken nuggets. A lot of different brands. So some of the brands that you see here are, are just a few of them, right? There's a lot of different companies making plant-based products, which is awesome because the plant-based movement is just growing and growing. Uh, pork alternatives could be barbecue jackfruit or uh, Beyond Brats or sausages. They, I think Field House makes uh, sausages as well. And then deli, so we see those turkey slices. Uh, there's, um, yeah, they make turkey, ham, chicken. Uh, a lot of different brands are making some too. Field Roasts, uh, good for Thanksgiving coming up. So Field Roasts makes a good... Um, you know, turkey alternative, Tofurky is another brand too that makes um, 
some of those plant-based turkey options. And then uh, Smart Light Life is a brand that makes uh, what they call smart dogs, which are alternatives to hot dogs. So really, I mean, these days, it's a great time to be a vegan. It's a great time to be plant-based because there's so many products that make it really easy to be. And I'm actually curious to see in the chat, go ahead and type in, uh, if you've tried any of these products, what is your favorite? Or if uh, you want to try something you haven't tried before, go ahead and type that in the chat. Beyond Burger, mm -hmm. Beyond Burger and Impossible Burger. And I don't know if anybody's noticed, but a lot of fast food restaurants are starting to hop on the bandwagon with these plant-based meats. So Burger King's got the Impossible Whopper. Um, I think um, I saw an article that McDonald's is going to come out with some um, Beyond or some plant-based alternative come 2021. I think Dunkin' Donuts has a vegan sausage. Um, I think Starbucks has the vegan egg or the vegan sausage as well. Um, good to look out for these things. So Olivia said vegan shrimp or seafood. I have yet to try that. I, I need to, um, I need to try that. <clears throat> Laura says they're concerned that they're very processed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a, um, that's a valid concern to have and, you know, no, um, no harm at all, obviously just skipping them and going straight towards the, the plant-based foods. And I will say, if you are concerned too, um, something that a little trick you can do to make it healthier is just balance the meal out with uh, also some whole plant-based foods. So for example, if you're eating the tofurkey slices, have them with that Ezekiel, you know, sprouted whole grain bread, put some spinach on there, maybe have a big salad on the side and that can make it a more balanced meal. Okay, so dairy alternatives, tons of different dairy alternatives. We've got yogurt, milk, ice cream, butter, cheese, uh, lots of different brands that are making these products. Personally, I love the uh, the vegan yogurts. I have oat milk yogurt on there, which is really delicious, but I've been really enjoying the just a plain soy yogurt uh, by Silk, which is really delicious. And then... Um, one thing to know about something like Earth Balance or some of those vegan butters is that we want to avoid palm oil. So palm oil and um, coconut oil are particularly high in saturated fats, which are really um, uh, not healthy for our hearts. But particularly palm oil is um, really harmful for the environment. So something to, to make a note of. And then we've got seafood alternatives. So I personally actually have not tried any of these ones. I need to get <laughs> trying some of them. I know Olivia said some of them are pretty good. Uh, but tuna and uh, Sophie's vegan tuna is an option you can get online. And then uh, fried fish sticks. Gardein makes um, uh, a type of fishless fillets. And then a way to mimic crab is by making crabless cakes is what you call them and from hearts of palm. So that's another uh, good idea. And then egg alternatives. So some of you might have heard of Just Egg. It's uh, on the right there, it really mimics egg a lot. It really looks really similar, it tastes pretty similar to, or you can do a tofu scramble, like I mentioned with um, crumbled tofu and some turmeric, garlic, onion powder. Make that with some veggies, got some whole grain toast, that's a great egg alternative, good healthy breakfast. And then you can also make a flax or a chia egg. And so that's really helpful for baking or for pancakes or something like that. Okay, and then we've got plant-based like pre-made frozen meals. A lot of companies are making these burritos or uh, pastas that are frozen. You can just put them in the microwave uh, really quick and easy. These are a lot of them are found at Trader Joe's, uh, Kroger, Meyer, Whole Foods, less at Aldi's. But if you can't find any products um, nearby, if your, your stores are limited, then you can always check online for products as well. And I put on this vegan certification as well. So that's just a sure way of telling that a product has no animal products in it. Okay, some other tips for going plant-based. Um, my number one recommendation is finding your why. So figure out why you want to go plant-based and kind of keep that in the forefront of your mind when you're making tough decisions. It can be really helpful for motivation and um, really helpful in those tough situations. 
And there's a lot of different reasons. So today we've talked about a lot of mainly health benefits, but there's a lot of benefits for the environment and animal welfare as well. So for whatever speaks to you the most, um, learn more about it, stay educated on it, learn more about the research behind what's going on, and, and that can help uh, with transitioning to plant-based eating. And then get support. So behavioral change is a lot easier when we do it with somebody or we have someone holding us accountable. So work with a healthcare provider that's familiar with plant-based or vegan nutrition or uh, do it with a friend, do it with a family member. It's going to definitely be easiest by doing it with someone you live with or someone you eat with frequently. And then experiment. So everybody's got something different that works for them. There's tons of different combinations of foods. So write down what works and write down what doesn't. And um, yeah, experiment around, find, find what you like. And then staying positive is really important. So stress manifests, manifests physically and mentally. So it's going to be only harder to achieve overall health if um, you're, you're getting down on yourself or having any negative self-talk. So focus on that positive self-talk and um, don't get down if you happen to slip up. You know, sometimes it takes a long time to make these changes and baby steps over time can lead to really big changes in the end. So just keep that in mind and uh, supplement as well. So supplementing is really important if you're going all in vegan or plant-based. The most important nutrients are going to be vitamin B12, vitamin D, and iodine. And those you can just get at any um, typical pharmacy or store. And here are some of the resources. There's tons of different resources out there but not limited to this list. I would recommend though, if you have a chronic disease or if you have a uh, risk factors for chronic disease, or if you have a family history of chronic disease, definitely check out some of the resources related to whatever that chronic disease is. And um, a lot of great books out there by um, these leaders of the plant-based movement. Like I mentioned, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Greger, uh, Juliana Hever, Dr. Barnard and uh, Dr. Khan, and then tons of great websites, documentaries, podcasts. Uh, like I said, the documentaries particularly, I think are really motivating, inspiring, and really eye-opening and just fun to watch. So definitely check some of those out. And then, uh, yeah. And here are the references that I used. And I am happy to take any questions. Thank you all so much for, again, for being here, for investing your time and your energy into learning more about plant-based eating. And I'm really happy to, to answer your questions. Thanks so much, Chantal. Um, I just first want to say a couple things real quick. The first is right now I am putting in the chat um, the, a link to a Google Doc I created with all of the resources that Chantal just mentioned in um, her last two slides. So if you want to take a deeper dive, a deeper look into that, feel free to just go to that Google Doc. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to say is Veg Michigan is in the works of scheduling a presentation, a virtual presentation with Dr. Greger, which will be happening. Ooh. Yes, very. we're very excited about it. Um, we don't have the exact date yet, but it's going to be happening sometime towards the end of January or February, we believe. Um, so also, if you become a member with Veg Michigan, a ticket to that talk comes along with that as well. And he is a wonderful speaker, and that's just going to be really great. Um, and feel free to follow um, our social media if you want to stay updated with when that's finalized. All right. And OK, so it looks like we have some questions so far. Let's see. Um, one of them was, what is your take on spicy versus mild? I think when you were talking about the spices and herbs, I suppose from a health um, perspective, it's beneficial to have your food spicier. Yeah, so I, I would just recommend for those who have, um, you know, acid reflux or, or curd, uh, the spicy foods you want to keep to a minimum. So um, maybe keep those spices to a minimum. But if you don't have any of those, uh, issues with spices, then by all means, go go for it. Um, you can pump up the heat a little bit, but but yeah, it can be a little hard on the digestive system. So I would just recommend watching the MS. Absolutely. Um, okay, someone says, any tips for plant-based eating while dealing with nut and seed allergies? Yeah, absolutely. So the I can go back to the plant-based 
protein um, slide as well. And whoops. So nuts and seeds, it's, um, obviously you're gonna get some um, plant-based proteins and also some healthy fats. So I would recommend just to focusing more on these other, uh, these other plant-based proteins, not nuts and seeds. So beans, lentils, soy foods, whole grains, um, maybe some of those vegetables that are higher in protein as well. And then as far as healthy fats go, um, you can include avocados. Um, avocados have some healthy fats in there as well. All right. Um, Judy asks, what about stevia for a sweetener? Uh, she said she grew some. Awesome. Wow. I've never heard of that. Um, I've never heard of someone growing it um, in their in their own garden. But uh, yeah, stevia is uh, a, a lot of the research says that stevia is a safe uh, sugar substitute, especially that it comes from a plant and you're growing it on your own. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, someone else had asked any truth to the old wives tale about water and apple cider vinegar for health benefits. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would say if, if you're eating the typical, you know, the standard American diet and then drinking apple cider vinegar and water, you're not, not going to get that many health benefits from it. But if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and you have some, um, uh, some of the apple cider vinegar and water that, um, could be, uh, helpful. So it's good to think about the big picture rather than individual uh, things. Absolutely. Um, okay. It looks like Laura says, I love pearl couscous, not fond of grain couscous. Is there a difference in nutritional value? I don't think so. So the only difference in nutritional value is when you're going to have um, the white couscous versus the whole wheat couscous. So the white couscous is going to be, and I don't know if pearl, I think you can get pearl and whole grain. So the, I think that actually might be what you're talking about is <laughs> the grain. Um, but the whole grain is going to have a lot of dietary fiber, a lot of vitamins and minerals that uh, we might not get with the pearl couscous. But if you love the, you know, the more refined couscous, it's okay to have every once in a while. And again, balance it out. So pair it with some vegetables and a salad or something like that. Couscous is delicious. I love it. Yeah, couscous is great. <laughs> um, okay. Looks like we'll just do these two last questions. Uh, Linda asked about the benefits of adding Himalayan sea salt to filtered water every day, um, I think sort of as a, as a tangent to the apple cider vinegar, if that has benefits. Gotcha. Uh, no, I haven't seen any research on that. And I typically wouldn't recommend adding extra salt in because typically, I mean, unless you're doing whole food plant-based, obviously we want to, um, well, actually we don't technically need any added salt, um, just about like 1500 milligrams a day. So if again looking at that whole picture um maybe it could be beneficial if you're not getting salt elsewhere but, but um if you're eating some processed foods those typically have sodium in them so um again yeah good to look at the the whole picture definitely um and then julianne asks if you have any recommendations for a good pasta brand you like yeah, uh, so any typical, I mean, I usually just get like store brand uh, whole grain pasta, but Banza, the chickpea pasta, if you've heard of that, um, it's uh, gluten-free made from chickpea flour. It's a really good brand, uh, but any, I mean, any organic whole grain um, brand is going to be a good, good option. And then I think, Olivia, I think you said that was the last question, but it was funny. I saw someone mentioned... Um, someone questioned why I didn't have any tomatoes oh, yes. <laughs> in the, but there are some tomatoes here. So there's some cherry tomatoes in, uh, this picture. So I wanted to show, um, whoever asked that question that, um, tomatoes are awesome. I'm sorry they're lacking in this presentation, but they're, they're great to include. Um, let me see. There is just one more question. Someone asked the best anti-inflammatory things to eat, if you have any particular recommendations. Yeah, great question. So a lot of these foods actually are anti-inflammatory as a whole, those whole plant-based foods, but ones in particular are going to be those fruits and vegetables. So those really 
deep, dark, rich colors in the fruits and vegetables, particularly the leafy greens. I recommend, um, you know, kale, spinach, Swiss chard, arugula, any of those are going to be really um, high in antioxidants. And then fruits, um, I mentioned berries. Berries have some of the highest amounts of antioxidants in fruits. And then um, certain herbs and spices too, uh, particularly turmeric has shown a lot of benefits um, being anti-inflammatory. So great questions, everybody. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm just responding to one question. I'm just responding to Peggy. She just asked how people can become involved uh, with Veg Michigan. So I'm just going to leave my email as well um, in the chat box. It's just Olivia at Veg Michigan. Feel free to shoot me an email. Um, and, you know, right now things are challenging event wise because of COVID, but hopefully sooner rather than later, we will be needing um, volunteers again. So that's a great way to be involved. So feel free to shoot me an email if you wanna get involved. Um, and lastly, I also, uh, just a, a few chats back, I shared the survey I mentioned earlier. Um, if anyone has a moment to please fill that out, that'd be very much appreciated. And yeah, I think that's it. So thank you so much, Chantal, and thank you so much to the L Livonia Public Library. Um, I don't know, Karen, do you have anything else you want to say from Livonia? Is she here still? Sorry about that. I was trying oh. to unmute myself. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Thank you ladies very much. This presentation was awesome. I learned, uh, I learned a lot and um, I wasn't able to sit through and listen to the whole thing, but I'm looking forward to re-watching it. And it will be posted on our social media uh, outlets and on our YouTube channel, um, as far as I know, unless, you know, barring any technical difficulties. So thank you very much. Sweet. Sounds good. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Thanks everyone. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.